So it's almost October already. I can't believe that. Time is flying by. I say that all the time, but it really is. And I buy stocks once a month, so I'm going to dig into some of the stocks that I'm going to be buying in October, probably. And Tyler's going to do the same. Before we do, please take a minute, check out the link you see on your screen for a message from my sponsor, The Motley Fool. You can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now, and it's the best way to support this work we're doing. Hopefully you enjoy the video, and I'd love to hear your comments on what we should be buying and selling if you don't agree with these. It makes for a fun discussion in our YouTube channel. So I don't know if I'm going to initiate any new positions in October. I bought a couple new positions in the past few months. I started a new position in PayPal. I uh, did kind of a starter position in Roblox just because I think it's a really interesting business. And I, I just looking at some of the market action recently, especially after the Fed's decision, there are a couple of stocks that I'd like to add to. So I'm going to talk about a couple that I'm almost certain to add to in October when I do my next round of buying. Um, one is realty income, and this shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. Uh, it's an investment that it was the first real estate, st real estate stock I ever bought over a decade ago. I've added to it many, many times since then. And I've been adding to it kind of aggressively in the past few months because it's really starting to show its interest rate sensitivity in in recent months. It's at a 52-week low. The yield is 5.7%, which that's the, the highest in it yield on cost you could get for realty income since 2014. Um, it's a very, very low valuation. Again, interest rate sensitive company, but it's an extremely stable business. NetLease Re it has over 13,000 properties, most of which are occupied by very resilient tenants. Um, businesses that aren't very recession prone, things that aren't very disruptable by e-commerce. Um, dollar stores are the number one property type, just to name an example. Um, things that tend to do better when the economy gets bad and offers prices that even the best e-commerce retailers can't match. Um, the, but the vast majority of the portfolio is made up of companies just like that. And it's one that I'm probably going to add to again this, this, um, this month. Another one, and this is probably the most controversial one I've been adding to recently lately, is Disney. Uh, Disney is also right near its 52-week low. And full disclosure, my family and I, we're Disney people. We live in driving distance to Walt Disney World. We have a house right near there because we take our kids there pretty often. Um, I really applaud the recent shift towards spending in the parks and cruise line as opposed to streaming. Now, the recent news headline says Disney is doubling its spending in the parks and cruise lines over the next 10 years to $60 billion. That's roughly double what it had planned on spending. I don't really see that as a spending increase. I see that as a reallocation because if you remember a few months ago, when Bob Iger came back as CEO, they cut roughly three, a few billion dollars of annual spending. Most of which was targeted at the streaming division, which, you know, was just blowing through money way too fast. The parks are where Disney makes its money, period, the end. It's, it's in demand in all kinds of markets, even in recessions, even in slow times of year. How slow does Disney World really get? The parks are a massive cash machine and where they should be focusing most of their resources. Streaming is what it is, and they need to make that a leaner operation, and it'll be a nice, profitable, consistent revenue source. But at the heart is the Disney experience. Um, I, I love this move. Uh, especially on the cruise line side, that's a people don't really appreciate the economics of the Disney cruise line. They charge roughly three times for a cruise what their competitors do, like Carnival and Royal Caribbean, and have essentially the same cost structure. So it, it's a, a much more profitable cruise line just because of the Disney name. It's kind of like how, you know, we paid more for our house in Orlando because it's in a Margaritaville resort, not in the nameless subdivision. So it, uh, I, I kind of love this move, and it makes me want to add to the stock more, especially at 52-week lows. And in the past, when Bob Iger has made big spending decisions in the park, they've been they've always worked out well. Um, their Star Wars land in, in the in Disney World is, is was a massive draw, um, and and sold a lot of tickets. So I've rambled on about those two. Tyler, what's what's one that you're looking at? And if you have any comments on mine, I'd love to hear them too. I, you know, uh, realty income is something, it's one of those, 
same thing. It's hard to go wrong with it because it's reliable dividend payer. Every it's going to probably increase its dividend every month from here to perpetuity. I, I find the move to casinos a little interesting. It's a very it's, it's a different change and. Disney, I feel like we could do 40 minutes on just going back and forth on everything that Disney does, just because it, it's a it's an <laughs> interesting topic. But for my one that I, I find very intriguing right now, we're going to go, we're going to wander off into the, the land of small cap uh, companies. We and, always do when we always do when you're here. Yes. And so <laughs> I, you, you, you can already hear the listener or the, the uh, people watching this video already rolling their eyes. Uh, I'm going to look at um a, a industrial sand company called U.S. Silica. This business, I think more people might be familiar with it because during the shale boom in the 2010s, uh, frack sand or fracking sand was one of the more popular kind of meme, you know, meme stocks before meme stocks existed sort of thing. Or, you know, everyone thought that frack sand was going to be one of the, the biggest, you know, winners of the shale boom and people were, were bidding up these companies really, really high. And then we kind of had the crash. And a lot of these companies have not recovered. Now, what makes U.S. Silica kind of interesting is during this like rediscovering itself after the, the, that you know, decline in, in, in oil and gas is it bought a lot of like industrial uh, sands, so diatomaceous earth, a bunch of other like essential minerals that we need to make things like filters and paints and dyes. And basically, you know, a lot of the products that we use today, as, uh, asphalt shingles, things like that. They, tons of uses, uh, uh, very diversified markets in everything that it, you know, makes sand and other, you know, kind of aggregates and things like that. So it, it's a business that's very much on the rebound. It's, re, it's capital, uh, you know, its returns have been improving materially. You know, we've seen an uptick in, in oil and gas. They're not spending nearly as much money like trying to expand their footprint that they were doing during the 2010s, such that it's actually spewing off cash right now. This used to be a business where you look at it and go, oh, it's got so much debt, but you know, it's reduced its debt from 1.2 billion down to let just a little bit less than 900 million in the past couple of years. Management has said that it's going to continue paying down that debt. It's going to improve its, you know, it, its, its leverage metrics. It's going to improve its balance sheet. And with not a lot of plans to, you know, spend a lot of money on new things. Once that balance sheet gets nice and clean, there's going to be return to shareholders. And this is a stock to me that looks incredibly cheap. Uh, right now it trades for four times free cash flow. So I, I think it, it would take a lot of, you know, bad news, both in oil and gas, as well as kind of industrial sands for this to really go south on me. And because of that, and, you know, with so many other things looking expensive in the market right now, this is one of those ones that barring some big economic recession, I could see this being a, a big winner over the next couple of years as people start to realize, hey, this company has really cleaned up its act. And I think getting in a little bit early now would be a, a pretty attractive investment. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment, so I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by nearly four times. Go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 504% as of September 8th, 2023, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 130% as of September 8th, 2023.